We are coming ba back to our part. Next part in this we'll talk about worms and trojans and some other stuff. So what is worm now? See, we know about virus, right? So if you if you're not seen my previous video, do check my part three because in that we have covered viruses, right? So what is virus again? It's a code which will affect your computer. It will first propagate itself. It will repli it will create some replicas, and once you get the uh, once you get the power, it will attack your system. The next the next type of malware. The next type of malware is your worm. Now what is worm? Now these are the types of virus. This is this is a type of virus, not exactly a, a virus, but you know it's a different uh, different category of virus in which uh, what it does. You know when you talk about virus, it will affect your computer. What worm does? It's just it will create replicas. It will not affect your computer. It will not attack your computer. It will not harm your computer. But in the network, let's suppose if you're in LAN network, if you're in a uh, big network. What worm will do? It will try to propagate. It will it will create multiple replicas. So in every network, it will create multiple replicas so that your network is so full of worms, it will stop. It will slow down your network. Everything will come down. Imagine this thing. Let's suppose you have thousands of computer in your LAN or thousands of computer in your company. So in that company, if your router gets affected with worms, that router will send this worm on each and every switch. And that switch will propagate this worm in each and every machine. You can imagine your bandwidth will go down because of this worm. It will slow down your network. So what worm does? It creates some replicas and it will affect, affect your computer. It, it will affect your network. That's it. But still it's dangerous. It's because it's affecting your network. And when you talk about IT, it's working on network, right? So you can imagine if your worm is getting affected, if your worm is attacking your Google services, everything goes down. It's because network goes down, Google goes down. So it's very simple. The next, what we have is Trojan. So we have what is called a Trojan horse. Not a Trojan horse. See, uh, you know, you might know about that movie of Troy, right? In movie Troy, you have seen that uh, seen that footage in which the, the king sent his soldiers uh, hidden in a big wooden horse. And that wooden horse is gifted to some other king. What the other king thinks, it's a real gift. But what is there? It's soldiers, right? So it's something like, in IT world, what you can do is, you can think it of like, you're downloading some software from internet, you know? You're so happy that you're getting free software on uTorrent. You're getting free software, free games. You're getting free movies. But the problem is, there are some Trojans in there. Example, if let's suppose I want to attack all this system, so what I will do, I will upload a movie with some Trojans. What you will think you're getting a movie, but what you're getting is movie with Trojans. And what that Trojan will do, it might affect your computer, it might uh, it might act as a spyware, it will, in, in short, it will affect you. So what you think, it's good. What happens is bad. So that is what Trojan Horde means. So, so Trojan Horde, this word comes from a, uh, ancient time in which they, they, they attack each other with the help of these hidden things. So what is Trojan? It's something hidden with some good thing. So if you're getting a software for free, you're getting a Trojan for free. So think about it. When you download anything from internet, next time, check it. Okay? Scan it before you use. So there might be some Trojan there. So that's Trojan house. So you have viruses, you have worms, and you have Trojans, right? But the problem is, if you talk about all these different languages, you might be knowing about Java, right? So in Java, we have something called as applet. So it's something called as applet. So this applet, then we have something called as uh, uh, ActiveX. So if you know about ActiveX, I don't know. So it's ActiveX. Now, what is what this mean? See, this when we talk about internet, there, is, there are some components. There are some components which works on server. There are some components which works on client side. So example, if you're providing a web service, right? If you're providing a web service, uh, in that, when you're, when you're writing a server side programming, you have to use uh, JSP, you have to use ASP, you have to use PHP, you have to use Ruby. So all those languages, they works on server side. Client side, you have JavaScript, you have VBScript, right? But there are something called as components. So like when you play games, when you play online games, that game resides on server, but when you want to play it, that game you you download this those games on your browser, you play it, 
And when you say close, that games get deleted because it should resides on server, but it runs on your machine. If we talk about JSP file, if we talk about ASP file, if we talk about PHP file, this file runs on server. Output you see in your computer, right? But if we talk about games, online games, it resides on server, it runs on your computer, right? So that's what, uh, that's, that, that's called as client-side components. And if you're gonna create client-side components, you have to use applet or you have to use ActiveX. So applet, we create applets using Java. And for ActiveX, we have to use some Microsoft technologies. Okay, so let me check, yeah. Okay, so we have a Java applet and then we have M, uh, Microsoft ActiveX. But the problem is, it's good, right? Your, there's something on server which is which gets downloaded and it will execute on your machine. But the problem is, attacker, attacker can use these two things to attack your system. Transist, right? So let's suppose if we write some malicious code in, in that software and that software gets executed on your system. It might affect your system. And that's why Java has provided one securities that applet cannot access your system resources they have implemented the security now but earlier it was open your applet can affect your system so if you don't know about applet i will recommend you to go back to your books and study about applet so you, you might be knowing about servlets so servlets are something which resides on server which runs on server applets resides on server but runs on client machine so that's why we have these two different names for it so it's still risky, right? So applet and ActiveX, they reside on server, executed on your computer or your browser. It can affect your computers, right? Then what next we have? We have uh, cookies. So if you don't know about cookies, cookies are something like, it's a token. It's a token given to a client so that next time the client sends the request to a server, server should know who is that client. It's because your servers are they are stateless now what is stateless they don't know anything about the client so if client sends a request to a server client need to send his details to a server right so every time you cannot send details right every time the server will not ask you who are you so what we can do is that server will create a cookie that cookie gets stored on your computer on your local computer like client side computer next time let's do a good example let's suppose this is your client and this is your server so we have client and we have server now let's suppose client will send a request, server will send a response, so this is request, this is response, right? But the first time when client sends a request, server don't know about client. Server will send a response, but next time when client sends a request, server should know who is the client. So what server will do, he will create a cookie, right? a basic cookie. In this cookie, it will have client's detail, and this cookie will get stored on client side, so that next time, when client sends a request, it will also send cookie. Okay, so this is how cookie works, right? So, cookie is simple. Yeah, so this are the type, this is the type of attack you can have. So first, they can attacker can use virus, second, attacker can use worms, attacker can use Trojan horse, or they can use applet, or they can use ActiveX. Okay, simple, right? So this is the uh, this is the type, this is your first chapter. So we have a fourth video, four videos on this first chapter. So first we'll discuss about, first in first video we have discussed about the network, security. Second we have discussed about uh, attacks. In third video I have discussed about viruses. And the fourth video we have, we have seen worms, trojans, then we have applet, activex, all those things. So this is your first chapter. I will still recommend once you just read that book once so that uh, my ideas, you will get some ideas about my videos, okay? so. First, watch this video and do, do, do read that book, okay? Atul Kahate. So if you have any doubts, do comment so that I will create one more video on your doubts. So please do subscribe and thanks for watching.